Welcome to the Divine Connection Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Roche, and together we are walking the path of discovering your true self and the alignment with your soul. Through these conversations, you will experience a deeper level of connection with yourself and the universe, and most importantly, you will trust in your spiritual journey ahead. Let's begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Divine Connection podcast. Today, we are answering another question from the audience. But before we get into today's question and conversation, I want to share something really, really exciting with you all. And that is that the Archangel Oracle card deck is officially here yes i'm so excited oh my gosh this has been such a long time coming and if you've been following me on social media then you probably already knew that the deck was out if you ordered your copy of the deck then you hopefully have it in your hands or are about to very very soon And if you do not have your copy of the deck yet, you can order it now at the link in the show notes below this episode. I am so excited and I'm not going to go into all the things here today, but stay tuned for an upcoming episode where I'm going to be meeting with the artist, Nina Catherine, and together we are going to discuss the creation of this Oracle card deck. So stay tuned for that. Now, today's episode, I'm so excited because this is something, this is a conversation that I have been wanting to go into for so long now, and I'm so excited that this question came in, and it's actually a two-part question, and for anyone who is a healer or doing any sort of work that is service-based that brings through healing, coaching, guidance, whatever it is, or if you desire to do so, this episode is going to be so good, so impactful for you. And it's all around this conversation of setting your fees for your services. And when it comes to doing your healing work, actually receiving money for your work and how to move through the discomfort, how to move through the feelings of maybe unworthiness or not good enough or just anxiety, responsibility, all the things that come up around this topic. So I'm really excited to dive in today. So our question comes from Larissa. And like I said, it's a two-part question. The first part I'm going to read now, and then the second part I'll read as we go through it, because it's very much related. So we're going to start off with part one. So she says, how do you handle setting fees for services and consistently charging people for healing work? I know I can help people and I would love to help more people, but I also have fear in my heart of actually owning my own business and it being profitable and being responsible for it. So I do give lots for free, but it also drains me and annoys me that people don't do the work and I would like to work with committed people, people that pay because they are ready to heal and do the work. I also get anxious accepting money and feeling worthy of accepting money when it is sent to me. This is such an amazing, powerful question. I think every single one of us can relate to this, especially, you know, like I said, this is going to be so relevant for those of you who are healers, who have businesses, who desire to have a business, to bring through your gifts, to bring through this healing work to others, to support other people. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to the conversation around business, business is an exchange. It's services in exchange for most of the time money. And we live in a world where Money is a part of what supports us. It's it's the way that this world works. And so in order for us to thrive as healers and to have a business that thrives and that not only is in service to others, but also supports our own livelihood and supports our lifestyle and supports who we desire to be. There's so many different intricate things here. So I want to break this down for you today and kind of go through this piece by piece and 
help you shift if there is something here that really spoke to you that you can relate to in Larissa's question and help you to shift so you can view yourself differently and also view your responsibility as someone who has a business or desires to create a business in a different light that is empowering for you. And that helps to bring you closer to that vision that you desire and that you're building towards. Now, I'm going to start off by, first of all, sharing that I've been here in this exact position. <laughs> and I literally still remember to this day, the very first time that I was in a conversation with someone who wanted to pay for, I forget at the time, I think it was like two 90 minute sessions or something like that. I don't remember. It was some sort of a package and it was around $300. And I remember just like, as we were having the conversation and she was telling me that she's interested and that she wants to, you know, do this with me. I remember having that feeling, the exact same feeling as you described Larissa of this feeling of anxiety, this feeling of, am I good enough for this? That, like all of those things came up for me. And in through that process, as I was working through it, I remember getting down on my knees and just like getting into a space in my body, in my mind, in my energy of, I am worthy of this. 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 Like that is what I was doing. I was just like in such a state of, oh my gosh, like we're on the brink. This is about to happen. Someone's about to pay me $300. Like, oh my God, this is a big deal. I'm freaking out right now. This is the first time someone wants to pay me for my services. What am I going to do? And how am I going to handle this? And can this actually happen? And like all those thoughts coming through my head. And so getting down on my knees and just like, in such a state of like, I, I remember like getting to tears of just like, I'm worthy of this. I get to do this. This is who I am. This is part of my work. Like I get to receive for this work and, and the client paid and we had a set our sessions and it was amazing. And that was a really huge breakthrough moment for me in terms of accepting money in my business for my work and it becoming a real thing because up until that point it was just like I was just you know someone who posted online and talked about angels and energy healing and that sort of thing but it wasn't actually a business you know and so this was really the beginning of it be becoming something very real for me and so the core foundation in all of this when it comes to your business and when it comes to your work as a healer is having this foundation of seeing your own value, which based on your question alone, I can already see that that's there. You know, when you said, I know I can help people. And so that right there is a perfect place to start is knowing that you can help people and, and, and seeing your own value in how you help other people. And that is one of the key, key things here is that when we see our own value in terms of who we are as healers, as light workers, as spiritual teachers, as coaches, mentors, guides, whatever it is for you, when you see your own value in terms of the gifts that you bring into the world, that is what people will start to see as well. So it's essentially your from within yourself, our responsibility, one of one of our first responsibilities is to bring forward and to project out our own value, not by trying to prove ourselves, but but simply through your own beliefs in your own self and how you view yourself and seeing how capable you are, how amazing you are. And you know, I'm assuming that this is already at a point since you said that, you know, you give lots for free, that you have already established some sort of interaction with people where maybe you've already received feedback as well in terms of your own work and how it has impacted other people. So that already right there is a great space to be in to be reflecting back to yourself and internalizing for you your own value as a healer and your own value as someone who brings your these gifts into other people's lives and how it supports them. Now, the other thing that I want to say, you know, for those of you who are maybe just just starting out, there is there is some some value in bringing through services 
free of charge as you are building confidence in what you're doing, what you're bringing forward as a way of, you know, kind of proving the concept, so to speak. Because at the end of the day, there is a level of confidence that is built through practice. And so when you're starting out, being able to offer free services, but still in exchange. So this is one of the things that I always say is still having it be an exchange. It doesn't have to be a monetary exchange, but an exchange for feedback, an exchange for a testimonial, an exchange for a recommendation, you know, like for them to refer you to a friend or whatever, but some sort of energetic exchange that is still there will feel very supportive because then at the end of the day, it's not just you giving, you're also receiving something in return. And that's a huge part of the dynamic that is meant to be built through this work is that there is an, there's a giving and a receiving. So when, you know, when you're starting out and you're offering services to people, it's a really great way to, like I said, validate your ability to help people, but also for you to just prove to yourself and see to yourself like, whoa, this is, this is powerful. This is amazing. And it also helps you to develop your way of doing things because, you know, as a coach, as a healer, as a guide, as a mentor, we all have our own different ways of guiding people, our own different methods to lead them in a session. And so being able to practice in this way where in a sense, there is this no pressure feeling because it's a free session, but it helps you to really discover yourself and discover who you are and tweak things and think about, okay, that didn't only work that way. Next session, I'll try it this way and kind of gives you that space to practice and, and play with it so that you continue to further develop your confidence in yourself, in your abilities, and in the work that you're offering to other people. And like I said, in exchange for a testimonial or feedback or a referral or whatever can really be helpful for you to continue to maintain your own energy where it feels like there's an exchange. And so, you know, going back to this question, the fact that there is this feeling of like feeling drained or feeling annoyed (laughs) about the fact that, okay, people aren't doing the work. Some people aren't doing the work. And I really want to, I'm doing this because I want to help others, not because, you know, and, and you're, and you're right when people pay, it's like they got skin in the game. All of a sudden, when you pay for something, you care more about what you just paid for. And so it does bring a sense of, you know, quote unquote, motivation to continue to uh, follow or continue to implement the practices or whatever the case may be. And so for you to feel that sense of like, I feel a bit drained because I feel like I'm giving a lot (laughs) and I feel a little bit frustrated because a lot of the times I'm giving and then it's not really being received in the way that I want to, that right there is already, this is, this is a beautiful sign for you to know that you are ready to elevate your energy exchange. So you've, you've, you've established this base of like, okay, I've, I've been giving things for free. I've built my confidence. I'm getting feedback. I know that this works. I know that this is powerful. So now you're ready to up-level your energy exchange. And so that's what your next step is here, Larissa, is the elevated energy exchange. And because what you're giving and how you're bringing through your gifts and the healing work and the energy and all that, it's a proven concept and it's backed by your confidence in it. So that's the key thing here. That's why we started off with that in the conversation is backing up what you're bringing through the services. It's backed by your confidence. And sometimes it's a, it's just, it's simply a matter of anchoring that in, like really focusing on the value that you're bringing to others, knowing that now you're elevating the, the level of energy exchange that is happening here. Okay. And so, and we're going to get to setting fees in a second. I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you about how we actually set fees. Like, okay, I'm here in the space of, I'm ready to up level my energy exchange, but like how, where, how much, how much do I charge? Where do I set this level to? How do I know what it is? We're going to talk about that. But what I want to first get into is something that you mentioned, which I think is really important to address and, and to speak to here, which is your relationship with responsibility. 
because that is something that is going to, as, as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, how we, we have to look at and continue to grow and develop and deepen our relationship with responsibility. Because at the end of the, at the end of the day, as an entrepreneur, you are responsible. You have a lot of responsibilities. You are responsible for a business, for your clients, for your audience, for your people, you're responsible for the money as it comes in. And so there is a lot of responsibility, but it doesn't have to be a bad or scary thing. So that's the first place where I suggest for you and for anyone listening to this that feels this, like, oh, if that, what I just said, felt really scary and overwhelming to you, I want you to begin to look at why. Where did you learn that you are not responsible? Where did you learn that you are not responsible or that you suck at responsibility or whatever, you know, tweak that question, but where did you learn that? Who said that? Why do you believe that? Where did you internalize that for yourself? And it's time to unravel that and remove that because that's not actually true. And one of the things that I want you to know, and this is why, you know, you, we can take this conversation of business in so many different directions and from so many different perspectives, but I feel like there's something really special and powerful about the fact that, you know, coming from me and my journey and my experiences and what I've, what I've seen and how I work as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, is that there is this very powerful spiritual energy behind everything. And the thing is, is that if you were chosen and if you believe that God chose you to bring through these gifts to the people, to serve others in this specific way, it means that God already sees you as responsible. It means that you are, were already seen as that, that God already trusts you with the gifts that you have inside of you. And so it's us that get in the way of that. It's not because it's actually true that you are not responsible or that you can't handle it, that you're not capable of it or whatever. It's about us detangling from that and coming back to the truth, the truth that is connected to the divine, the truth that says, I am here for this. And therefore, everything that is involved with me being of service gets to be peaceful gets to be clean, gets to be empowering, gets to be something that supports me rather than bogs me down, rather than something that drains me, rather than something that makes me feel icky and, and whatever. So that's the thing that I want you to look at here is how, you know, where, where this belief around your responsibility came from and looking at and it's bridging the gap to what is actually true. The truth is that you were chosen for this. The truth is that if you have call this calling on your heart to serve people in this way, to bring through energy healing or whatever the work is through this specific way, then it's because there's a greater divine plan that is in place, that, that, that God and the angel and the divine are here supporting you through this. And that together, when you join forces with this, that anything is possible. And so that begins to bring through this, this deep sense. I know for that for me, when I started to look at my relationship with responsibility and actually started to focus on the belief and the knowing that I'm capable of this, I've got this. I may not know the exact how, but I trust myself to figure it out. And I trust myself in knowing that I will be led through the responsibility, through, you know, even from the, from the start, I've heard, you know, so, so many times from people where they just felt so overwhelmed, even just starting their business, like officially, you know, when you have to register it with the state and, you know, if you're creating an LLC and da, 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 like all these steps you have to do, go make an official bank account. Like that can feel, even just that step can feel very overwhelming to people, which I don't blame you at all because we've been taught to believe that these things are 
complicated or maybe we're just not smart enough to figure it out or whatever the case may be. So this is where I want you to begin to look at all this static. I see it as static and noise and just like all of these things that, that get, that, that distract us and instead to lean back and to quiet that static, lean back into truth, coming back into your heart, coming back into your connection to the divine and seeing, whoa, wait a second. This actually gets to be simple. And when I started to really get into the focus of the practice that business gets to be simple and that money gets to be simple, that was a game changer. And it's not that I believe that right away because it's not as simple as just being like, yeah, just let it be simple. Like, but I started to look at and really see, it was starting to be revealed to me where I was overcomplicating my relationship with money, with my, um, my, my responsibility as a business owner, things like that. And to really bring through this identity, which, which is another part here, the identity that I am someone who runs a business. Like I'm a CEO, that's who I am. I run the business. And, and so seeing yourself in that way. So part of this shift with your, uh, in your relationship with responsibility is how you're viewing yourself and the identity work behind it. So, so it's, it's going from identifying yourself as someone or identifying with the idea of, well, I'm just like starting a business. I'm kind of a healer. I'm kind of this person. I'm like, you know, whatever versus I'm a CEO or I'm a business owner. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm, you know, whatever, whatever title feels relevant to you. That's besides the point, but you're shifting your identity. And within that identity, that is then where you are claiming the fact that I'm capable. I am responsible. I trust myself with a responsibility. These things get to be simple. Simple doesn't mean easy. <laughs> or that there's no work involved, it still requires effort, but it's simple in the sense that we don't overcomplicate the relationship. Honestly, I could go all day long on this, <laughs> which I'm going to share more where you can learn more and, and dive into this with me on a deeper level in a second. But that's that's what I want you to to, to look at here, okay? And then once we kind of sort through that, then it, again, this is where it gets to the simple part, the easy part, <laughs> which is setting the fees. Setting the fee is actually the easiest part because at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong way to do it. There's no right or wrong number to set to charge people for your work. Because if you look at the industry as a whole, you can see the whole range and it's really going to be up to what you personally feel most connected to and that aligns with your vision and that you know you can grow into. So because here's the thing, you can see people who charge a very minimal amount and their schedule is booked, you know, like Monday to Friday, nine to five, they have client sessions all day long and they're booked, 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 booked. And it's just like full. And, and that's amazing. And then on the other side of the spectrum, there's people who charge very high for their services or for a session and their calendar isn't that booked, but at the same time, it doesn't need to be because the, the, the money exchange is different and that's what, how they chose for it to be. And at the end of the day, they're serving a different clientele. So this is something where what I like to do personally is there's a couple things that I look at when it comes to setting fees, either for sessions or for, you know, classes that I teach or whatever, is that I, first of all, the, at the, at the most basic level and general level is that I look at the thing, whatever it is, whether it's a class, a course, a session as an energy, as an energetic space or an energetic container that I'm holding. And I, and I feel into it. And just from that, I can get a sense for what the energy exchange is that, that it desires to be or that it, it's meant to be. So I can, I can pick up on that just leaning into the energetic container, whatever it may be, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one session, that's an energetic container, whether it's a class that I teach, that's a, that's a container, whether it's a full-on course or a four-month 
mentorship thing. That's those are all separate energy containers that when you purchase it, you're stepping into it, there's a certain level of exchange that's going to happen and a transformation or a result that's going to come from it depending on what the container is that you're stepping into. So that's how I view it first of all. And so when I feel into it, I'm feeling into I can already sense, I get a sense intuitively which I feel like, you know, specifically speaking to Larissa, I feel like you're going to be able to do that and and for many of you who are listening to this, I feel like that's something that will naturally develop and come as you practice this. So that's the first step. I kind of just feel into and I feel into the to the amount, the the dollar amount that that is coming through from that. The other thing I take into consideration when I'm looking at these containers is I'm I'm taking into consideration the work that is being done, the amount of time that I desire or that I'm being called to commit to that container. And then really taking into consideration everything that comes with that and how that aligns with the dollar amount. So for example, you know, I have a range, a huge range of things from uh, things that I've priced as low as $11 to things that have been priced over $6,000. And, you know, that's a huge range. And of course, the $11 thing is, is a very simple something that people receive and the $6,000 thing is a full on container of support and, and teaching and mentorship and guidance and all of that kind of stuff over a long period of time. So it's, it's, it's just different. And so I look at who I'm serving through these different containers and I look at what feels right in terms of the energy exchange there. And so that's how I decide and that's where where I feel into. And as long as it feels good in my body, then I trust it. I trust it, I trust it, I trust it. And there's been times when I have um, offered things at a lower price point, even though I know that I could have charged way more for it, but it just felt, I felt called to have it at a lower price point because whether it's because I'm trying to serve uh, you know, a certain group of people or more people or whatever the case may be. So, so that's something else that you will only know for yourself and that will only come through, you know, case by case kind of thing. So that's something that I want you to just take in, into consideration. And then it's about playing with it and, and you'll feel into, you know, this is the price that feels good for this kind of thing. And this is the price that feels good for that kind of thing. And you kind of just start to play with it. But what is important is that you do start to price your things and you do start to offer a little bit of a range because, I mean, for one, it's going to be something that gives you a diverse way of serving other people. Let's say someone only can or wants to invest $20, well, then you have a $20 offer that's available to them or or less. And then someone who was ready and willing, like you said, to commit to doing the work, they're ready to pay hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars, and you have an offer that 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 supports them in that way. And so when when you begin to offer that range and bring that in, you're also beginning to show up in this energy of the identity that we talked about. And in a way, it's almost like a boundary where you're now declaring through just the services where it's like, you know what, I see my own value. I see the value in what I have to share and what I have to offer. And this is the energy exchange of this thing, whatever the service is. And that's just what it is. (laughs) And you're also in a way getting people used to, you know, your audience, people that follow you, you're getting them used to the fact that, oh, yeah, like there's an energy exchange here. There's an energy exchange and this is amazing. And they start to take it more seriously too. That's the thing is when we price stuff, people start to take it more seriously. And so that's another part of it, Um, you know, through, through this development of your business and of your work. And so this is a perfect segue into the part two question, which is, how do you handle family members or friends who constantly ask you for spiritual healing, but don't pay for services offer to pay or even share your biz and let their friends know who you are and how you help people. 
They pop up on a semi-regular basis saying to send them energy or Reiki or a message, not even asking. Oh my gosh. Yes. This is so huge. (laughs) And I feel like, you know, specifically to the situation, the first step is going to be to just through how you show up on your social media, how you show up in your, you know, newsletters, whatever, however it is that you, you are posting and letting people know about your work. It is going to be, first of all, to start sharing and showing that, you know, this is comes at a cost This is how much it is, you know, that sort of a thing. And then more directly, when you are thinking about, you know, having that conversation with your family members or your friends or whoever it might be, it's about thinking, you know, but prior to the conversation, you are already within yourself setting that boundary where you for yourself are recognizing and, and, declaring within your own self that your work is valuable and that it deserves to have an energy exchange. And it's simply, you know, once you kind of have that own conversation with your own self and you anchor into that as the truth, the biggest thing is the why behind it. Because if we try to set boundaries with people without really being clear and anchored in our own why, like, why am I setting this boundary again? (laughs) Then we're not going to hold it up very well. We're going to be wobbly with our boundaries and we'll be like, okay, fine. This is the last time, you know, we'll be lenient, that sort of thing. So when you do set the boundary, you want it to come from a place where you're very deeply grounded in it and the why behind it. And, you know, you and I both know you're not creating this boundary because you're trying to be mean or because you're greedy or whatever. It's simply to preserve your own energy. It's simply because you deserve to have this energy exchange. And because your time is valuable, you have so much going on. And, you know, it's not that you don't care about those people, you know, your family, your friends, but it is, it's, it's this declaration of, you know what, I really value my time and my energy. And this is just something that doesn't work for me anymore. And that's simple as that. And then offering, you know, having that space where you can say something along the lines of, you know, the next time someone asks you, can you just send me energy healing? Can you just send me Reiki? Can you just send me a message about this? It's simply as saying something, you know, I've decided that I'm not doing this for free anymore, that this is part of my business, this is part of my work, that this is part of my services. And in order for me to hold my integrity in the work that I do, there has to be an energy exchange. And, you know, you can offer whatever rate, maybe you have a friends and family rate or whatever, you know, for those people. But it's simply as saying, you know what, if you'd like, this is the rate for you. And that would be awesome. But that's, that's just what it is now. And it's being okay with them saying no. (laughs) And, and so this is where the work comes in prior to doing it where if they say no, it's not taking it personally. It's not because you did something wrong. It's not because, you know, they hate you now or whatever. It's people will sometimes be uncomfortable when we start to to create boundaries. So it's just being mindful of that. And then simply knowing I'm creating this boundary. They might reject it. They might say no to my services and that's okay. It's not a, it's not a reflection of me. It's not a reflection of me. And maybe they're not my ideal client then. And, and so when you begin to hold that energetic boundary and you, and you are clear in it and you're strong in it and you are, you know, you're grounded in it, that's also when you begin to really magnetize and attract the ideal clients and the ones who are ready and willing to pay, the ones who are ready to do the work, the ones who desire to do the work, the ones who want to be helped. And that's the most magnificent, beautiful thing. So that's where the, this connection to your truth, yourself, who you are, your value, and continuously repeating to yourself over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, the value that I bring into the world is incredible. I am valuable and others see it too. Those, that, those things, those were my mantras at the beginning. I used to say that on repeat every single day. I used to write in my journal every single day. I am valuable and others see it too. People see my value because I show up in this 
whatever way, you know, I would say things like that to myself to really mirror to myself my own value so that I would believe in it and actually feel it and be anchored in it. And I will tell you, so it makes a world of a difference. People feel it on a subconscious level when you believe in something versus when you don't. Anytime that I've ever sold something or offered, you know, a service or a program or whatever, where I fully believed in it so deep in my heart that there was no like question about it, it was, you know, successful. Like people bought it, people loved it, people really felt it, like all the things. When I offered something where I was like half in it, kind of believe it, kind of don't, questioning my worthiness, questioning whether I was good enough for this, questioning all the things you know, it was a different result for that. And it's not because anything outwardly, it's energetic. So that's the key thing here. And that is where, you know, a lot of people have this, like, this is a huge milestone for a lot of people in their work as healers, as entrepreneurs, that this is where you really bridge the gap between, you know, the saying (laughs) where it's an expensive hobby versus you actually have a business. So this is where we bridge the gap. So having said that, I am really excited to invite you all to come and join me for a three-day business workshop that is happening the first week of February. I'm so excited because this conversation around healers and business and light workers and being able to bring your gifts and your truth out into the world in this specific way as an entrepreneur, as someone who Um, desires to build a business to support other people and themselves, this is a huge conversation that we need to have that we need to um, get into. And so I'm really excited to share with you all of my tips and guidance and everything that I've learned over the last over seven years now of being an entrepreneur. This is a three-day workshop that is happening the first week of February. All of the details can be found in the description, in the show notes below this podcast episode. I cannot wait to see you there. And for those of you who are building a business, for those of you who are healers, lightworkers, coaches, guides, who are ready to bring your gifts out into the world in this greater way to officially declare this is what I've come here to do. It's not a vision that's sometime in the future. Like you're doing this now. You're part of this now. You're building this. You're creating this. This workshop is going to deeply, deeply serve you. So all of the details are on that page. You can see the breakdown of what we're going to cover, all of the things So that is what I want to share with you. And again, thank you so much, Larissa, for submitting your questions and for just, you know, bringing this to the table because I feel like this is something that goes through every single person's mind. Like everyone goes through this (laughs) and, um, and it's really important for us to be able to, in order for businesses to grow and to thrive, we have to understand how to work through this. So Thank you again. I cannot wait to get into all the things with you in the workshop next week. I am sending you all so much love, so many angel blessings. Thank you for tuning in and I will talk to you very soon. Bye. Thank you once again for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review. And if you want to learn more about the Divine Connection podcast, you can go to christinaaroche.com forward slash podcast and learn about how you can be featured on the show.